All right, so let's see what we want to do. We want to look at this problem here, where we have a light box that's sitting at the edge of a table. It's got a fan nearby, which is blowing wind onto it. So we've got something sort of looking like this. We've got a box on a table with some wind coming at it. Um, let's use a small W for the wind speed. And when this thing is going very, very slowly, this box stays there. So there's some friction or something here keeping it there. But when it goes fast enough, it um, falls off. So if we've got a situation like that, um, what we want to really know, what would be really interest in it, what would really interest us is uh, the minimum speed the wind has to blow for the box to fall off or the maximum speed for it to um, sit there. Uh, and the same thing. I mean, it's, there was only one critical value. Um, given that, we want to figure out what sort of things do we know about this um, situation. Well, we know there's a box, right? And we know there's a table. And the box should have a mass. Uh, we'll call that M. And it should have a drag coefficient so that it couples to the wind. Um, and we'll probably use viscous, or we, probably not viscous, we'll use quadratic drag probably. We'll put all that stuff in that one drag coefficient D. We don't need to worry about all the little situations here. Um, we just need that drag coefficient D. We can calculate that if we really need to at some other time. Uh, the table, that should have some friction. At least with the box. So we'll call that mu. And so that's probably all we really know about this situation. There's not much more we can tell about these things. However, uh, we do need to figure out what it is we want to find. We want to make sure we know what we want to find as well. Um, and that is this uh, wind speed. Right? So we want a wind speed. And we'll call that small w. And that should probably be sufficient for what we need for this problem. All right, so we're ready to start. Um, now that we have all that, uh, we've got our drawing here and so forth. We want to figure out a representation. Because this is a sort of force problem, we've got two different forces, drag and friction, right? Drag is a force, friction is a force. We want to probably draw a free body diagram. So let's see, we've got a um, mass there. That's probably the thing we want the free body diagram for. So let's see how we can do that. Um, first of all, let's draw some axes and a box, right? So that's what we're going to do there, some axes and a box to start drawing forces on. Okay, um, that's the x direction, that's the y direction. Uh, let's see, so we've got y and x, we've got a mass, um, so let's see what sort of things are going on here. We've got the wind pushing it, right? So we've got the wind coming from here and going this way. So that's our wind. Um, got some friction on the bottom, which is opposing the wind. Okay, we're okay with that. Uh, at the same spot where there's, a, where there's friction, right here, there's also um, a force pointing up pushing up from the table onto the box to keep the box from falling through the table. That's the normal force. And then there's some gravity coming down here. Uh, so we have um, the gravitational force or the weight coming down. I've already used W, so I'll use capital G for the gravitational force. So uh, you might want to list those down somewhere. Uh, we'll use them later. Uh, we've got N for the normal force. We've got W for the um, drag force. We've got G for the gravitational force. And we've got small f for the frictional force. Okay, so we've got all of those things. That constitutes our free body diagram, except for the net force. And what we want to do is we want to find the absolute um, highest value of, for this wind speed 
for this thing to be okay. So that's right at the spot where the frictional force is maximum, where the um, static friction is maximum. So you have no net force. So you have to write the net force on there in some way as well. So we've got all that. Um, and so that frictional or this um, free body diagram makes a good representation. Probably okay with that representation. Let's see, before we begin, we should choose a concept. Uh, we, note it, we note right here that we have no net force. That means probably um, Newton's first law is a good one. So probably writing out Newton's first law is better than that. But this, this thing doesn't use a lot of, um, doesn't have a lot of space. And our equation for Newton's first law should probably be the sum of all of the external forces. If you've got Newton's first law is equal to zero, the zero vector there. So that's probably sufficient for starting out. Newton's first law is going to be something that we have to use. Uh, fortunately, it's already built into the free body diagram. So we'll use the free body diagram in our plan a lot. Uh, that's why we make the free body diagram, is that it's useful for doing our planning. All right, so now we've got to go through this plan. Um, so the first thing with our plan is we need to figure out something that connects to our uh, wind speed. So we want that wind speed, so we need to work on, we need to work towards that. So what thing do we know about that wind speed? Well, we don't know very much except that it's somehow connected with the drag, right? Um, the wind is causing this drag. And basically, it's the relative velocity between the box and the wind, or box in the air, that's causing the drag. If the wind is moving, that's just air moving. So that means the relative velocity is W. So the magnitude of our drag force, W, is going to just be equal to the drag coefficient times the wind speed, the small w, squared. So that's the small w. Uh, so this is our definition of drag. Okay, let's see. Uh, we don't know this force. We do know uh, this guy here, the drag coefficient, it's right there. And we want W, the thing there, the small w. Okay, so I guess we're okay with that. That will be our equation one. So now we have to figure out something about that wind force there, right? Uh, I'll write w here because it's, it's got to go away. So this um, drag force we don't know what it is, but we do know that it's here on the free body diagram. So we can use the free body diagram to figure it out. All right. Uh, let's see what we've got as far as um, that goes. So with the free body diagram, so this will be our second equation. Uh, we take everything that's connected to the box, in this case in the x direction. Uh, so that'll be w is going to the right, so it's positive. F is going to the left, so that's negative. So the um, wind minus the friction, so the drag minus the friction, is um, going to result in the stability. So you have zero net force, so that has to be equal to zero. Uh, the gravitation and the, uh, the gravitation and the um, normal force don't show up because they're perpendicular to the x-axis. They're perpendicular to this axis, so they don't show up. All right, so that is coming from our free body diagram in the x direction. And that's using Newton's first law. So that's the first time we've used Newton's first law here. So we wanted to find that w, so we're good with that. So we've got an arrow there. We can cross out these guys. Uh, but we don't know the um, frictional force f at this point. So we can put that there, and we go to our next thing. Now, do we know anything about F that can connect us to anything at all? Well, we do know that the frictional force has to be connected to that friction coefficient, and it's probably going to be through the definition of friction. So we've got F equals mu 
n, right, where n is the normal force. So this is our normal um, definition for the maximum static friction. So definition maximum static frictional force. Okay, I'm at the edge there, so there we go. So let's see, that's what we wanted was the F. So we're good with that. Cross that guy out. We know the mu because it's right up here. And we don't know the normal force yet. So we can cross that off and we need a normal force N. Uh, four. Well, how are we going to get that N? Well, other than it appears in the free body diagram, right? So... Since that appears in the free body diagram, we can do exactly the same thing in the y direction that we did in the x direction. N is pointing up, so and it's connected to the box, so it should be a positive contribution. G is pointing down, and it's on the um, box. It's on the box, so it should also be on the left hand side, but be in the negative direction because it's pointing down. Uh, there's nothing else. These other two are perpendicular. With the wind and the friction are perpendicular to that, so they're not there, and the net force goes on the right-hand side. That's zero right there. So there's our normal force. That's what we wanted. Uh, and we have still the gravitational force left. So that was the free body diagram in the y direction. So then we have one more equation. Uh, so the weight, the gravitational force, is the same thing it's always been. This is mg. So we know what g is, or we wanted g, excuse me. Uh, we know what m is, and g is a universal constant. So we put a little um, open circle there. Uh, so since that's a universal constant, it's okay. It's not a variable we have to eliminate. So we no longer have any variables that we need to eliminate. Uh, so these five equations should be enough to get us where we want to go. So that uh, pretty much ends our planning. We're pretty good with the planning now. I think we're going to succeed. So now all we have to do is do a little bit of math, right? So we've got these five equations and we have to do something with them. I think the best thing to do with them is to start by using 2, which is basically F equals W, right? So our wind speed is equal to F. So that's using 1, right? We've got 1 there, or 2, excuse me. We're using 2. Uh, now, since we've got both of these guys, we can use this guy up here, 1, to substitute for um, W, and we can use 3 to substitute for F. So that means we have d uh, little w squared is equal to mu n. So that's substituting in uh, 1 and 3. Okay, so we're doing all right. Mu uh, n, that is ugly. Okay, uh, let's see. Then we need to figure out what to do with this guy, uh, because he's one of the ones we don't want, but we can, you know, just keep on going down this ladder here, substitute 4n a g, so that's subs 4, uh, and then g, we can substitute the little m little g, so we have mu times the mass times little g, uh, the gravitational acceleration so we subs 5, we substitute 5, and basically we're done. All we have to do is divide by d and um, take the square root. So we have w is equal to the square root of mu mg divided by the drag coefficient d. So basically we've solved the problem. This is the answer that we're going to claim is the correct answer, but we have to check it. So there are different ways to check it. Um, two of the ways that we've been using in class have been one to check to make sure all of the symbols on the right hand side of your answer equation, your answer formula, are either given up here or are universal constants or materials constants. Um, both gravity and the density of water are perfectly fine as these constants. 
So let's see, we've got mu, mu is given up here, right? So we can put mu here. Uh, we've got m, m is given up here, so we can have m in the givens. G, G is not given up there, but it's a universal constant. It's got that little yellow dot, so it can go there. And then we've got the drag coefficient, which we said was given with the box. So we'll put it here. All right, so mu md, universal G. So we're good with those. Now we have to do the dimensions. All right, the dimensions, they have some things you have to do. So first we'll get the dimensions of what we want. We want the wind. Uh, the wind speed should have um, units of meters per second, right? Which is length divided by time, so that's LT to the minus 1. So we're all right there. Uh, we just have to list that so that we can compare it to what we have, which is this mu mg. So I have this little bit of play, this little spot that looks like slate. Uh, that's because we have to do a little bit of work. Uh, so we want to find the um, units of mu, the square root of mu mg over d. All right, that's fine so far. Uh, that's equal to the units of mu to the one half times the units of m to the one half times the units of g to the one half times the units of d to the minus one half. Uh, most of these are pretty s simple. Mu has no units, so that's 1. The mass is m to the 1 half. G is lt to the minus 2, because it's an acceleration, to the 1 half. And so we just have to figure out that d part. Um, so let's go up here. We know that d is equal to a force. Um, times a, or it's equal to a force. Ugh. D is equal to a force divided by um, the square of a um, speed. So that means we have mlt to the minus 2 for the force. A newton is mlt to the minus 2. Uh, the wind speed is lt to the minus 1. That's squared. So that means we cancel out the t's. So that's t to the minus 1 squared is t to the minus 2. So we cancel out the t's. Um, so we have two l's in the numerator, in the denominator, one in the numerator. So that means we have ml to the minus 1 for our drag coefficient. So even though we didn't know it, we can still figure out what it's, what it's supposed to be from the definition of the... Um, drag force, right? So we've got all of these things that should be to the minus one half. So let's see, we've got this guy to the minus one half times that guy to the half, so they cancel. Uh, we've got um, L to the one half divided by um, minus L, L to the minus one to the minus one half, which is times L to the one-half, so that should be L. Then we have T to the minus two to the one-half, which is T to the minus one. And so this matches that, and we're all right, right? So that should give us um, an okay answer. So we've got two reasonability tests. The um, symbols here are symbols that we should have. And the dimensions here are the same on both sides of the equation. Dimen the equation is dimensionally homogeneous. So that means we have what is probably a pretty good equation. And this is basically the way you can go through and figure out how to do something like this. If you had numbers at the end of this step, after you've gotten w is equal to the square root of mu, mu mg over d, you can just start plugging in numbers but you don't really need any more than that. Okay, I hope that was sufficient, and I will talk to you next time.